Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order this uh, January 13th, 2015, regular council meeting of the District of Tofino. And Happy New Year to everybody. Welcome back from holidays and all the good stuff. Uh, to start us off, I, I'm going to start with a motion that the January 13th, 2015 agenda be amended to include notice of motion under new business. Second. Thank you, Councillor Thick. So, all in favor? Councillor McMaster? I'm in favor. Thank you. The motion is carried. And then I'll look for a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. On the adoption? As amended. Represented. Thank you. So, it's been moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Blanchett. All in favor? Councillor McMaster? Favor. Thank you. The motion is carried. And first we have the adoption of minutes from the meeting held December 9th. I'll move the adoption of the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Thurgood. All in favor? Councillor McMaster? In favor. Thank you, the motion is carried. Uh, no business arising from the minutes, so announcements from the mayor. Uh, I have two. First is very short, and that is just to officially welcome John Gilmore, our new fire chief, who started on January 6th, and to say um, that I think we're incredibly fortunate to have his leadership with our volunteer fire department, and uh, it continues to be a real pleasure to work with the fire department and uh, see how proud our community is, and I, I know that Chief Gilmore, as we get to call him now, is going to do some really great things with the fire department. Um, second, and this, is, this will take a little longer to read out, uh, last night saw a very successful meeting between all the stakeholders that have had involvement in the school gym, the Wiccaninish Community School Gym in the past few years. And this included School District 70, the school's administrators, the Wiccaninish Community School Society, the Parent Advisory Council, Toloquiet First Nations Council, Tofino Council, and the District's Recreation Department and the Tofino Recreation Commission. So in short, literally all the stakeholders that have had some use or involvement in the school gym. For the past two years, the District of Tofino, together with Toloquit First Nations, has had an agreement with the school district for the use of the school gym during after school hours. And during those hours, the school gym was effectively being rented from the school district and various user groups had access to do things like uh, badminton or basketball, floor hockey, and other recreational activities. The fact that the school gym use agreement for the current year was still being discussed between the parties created an opportunity for everybody to think more about the most appropriate use of the school gym. And yesterday's meeting enabled all the stakeholders to clarify their organization's roles and their interests in the school gym. And by the end of the meeting, several things were realized. First and foremost, that the school gym is an integral part of the school it is owned and maintained by School District 70, and by extension, the Wiccaninish Community School Society should have as much access to it as is required to run the programs that contribute to the school's mission of supporting the intellectual, social, and emotional health of students. And secondly, School District 70 is currently reviewing their policy for the district's community schools, and there are three in the school district, and the criteria by which they allocate resources to community schools. And School District 70 intends to bring more focus to children and adolescents as well as at-risk youth and their families. And effectively, I think this means that we can anticipate seeing more programming in the school gym to support those groups. And that lessens the opportunity for the other types of activities we've been seeing, like adult recreation activities. Third, it was universally acknowledged by everybody present there that community members of all ages need indoor space for recreation and the needs of school children and adults aren't mutually exclusive. And it was clear to all the stakeholders that indoor spaces for commu the community's recreation needs are in short supply here in Tofino. And while we've been making the best use of an existing asset, the school gym, this asset can't meet the current and growing needs of Tofino and Tolokia communities for indoor recreation space. So moving forward, the District of Tofino will work with the Community School Society as quickly as possible to identify whether there are any unused times or gym slots that the district can then in turn rent or have an agreement with School District 70 to run uh, recreation programs as we have before. But I also fully expect that the Tofino Recreation Commission is going to be discussing the outcome of last night's meeting 
and in due course making recommendations to us, Council, about the future of indoor recreation space in Tofino. It's been a really difficult time for recreation users and I know there's been a lot of frustration. And I also know that the solutions still aren't going to appear overnight, but I'm really confident that last night's meeting turned a corner in the relationship between the different stakeholder groups and it's given us some new ground to discuss the best ways to meet the long-term needs of the community. Not a perfect answer to the problem that we have, but a very, very good start. Okay. Very good summary. Thank you. So, moving on, we have no delegations. Um, under correspondence for information only, I suggest we take these uh, one at a time because I think something may come up in one of them. Uh, first is a letter from John Bowman, the president of North Island College, congratulating us on our election to office and informing us that they will be in touch with us to arrange a meeting. Yes, Councilor Sorry, question. I'm just wondering if uh, it's worth a response to say uh, we look forward to that meeting to kind of prod that because we don't have much happening at the higher learning, or hope it's happening at higher learning. Um, and just rather than just receive it, I'm wondering if we should uh, <coughs> make a motion that we respond and uh, express our um, uh, anticipation of the future meeting. Okay, I think you just made a motion. <laughs> okay, so Councillor Burke moves um, that council or that the district attorney respond to the letter and uh, express. Sorry. Um, um, I said our anticipation, but that mm -hmm. we look forward to. Uh, okay, respond uh, to the letter, um, thanking thanking them and uh, stating our support for the upcoming meeting. Uh, upcoming meeting. Thank you. Okay. And seconded by Councillor Blanchett. Any discussion? Okay, I'll call the question. Councillor McMaster, any discussion? No, that's a yes from me. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Thank you, Councillor McMaster. Yes. Okay, motion is carried. Uh, second is correspondence from School District 70, the school board, regarding, again, congratulations on election, and um, also inviting us to consider uh, a meeting with them. Councillor Brown? Yeah, again, I think uh, following up uh, uh, last night's meeting and a bit of an open door, there are other uh, concerns and issues, and we might have a uh, more receptive ear on some of those concerns. I know earthquake safety was one, um, you know. But also, we do have a, a school trustee, and maybe we need to be talking with that person a bit more as well around what would be an appropriate meeting in the school. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Councilor Thick. Yeah, I would concur, and I, I think that the school trustee should definitely, we should make sure that the school trustee is present, but I would really like to emphasize the need to put seismic concerns on that agenda, because with two earthquakes in the last short while, I think, and in, in Minish Elementary School in a high three uh, category, I think it deserves uh, a very high priority in our next meeting. Okay, and I see in the letter uh, that they are inviting us to meet with them at their convenience, so probably no reason to hesitate and wait for their invitation, so perhaps somebody would like to make a motion. Councilor Burke? Yeah, um, I would move that we respond to the letter and uh, express our interest in meeting with them at their earliest possible convenience. Okay. There's a second. Thank you, Councilor Pick. Any discussion? All right. Oh, thank you. Councilor just a, with the school trustee present. In other words, that we don't call the meeting and the school trustee can't be there. Mm -hmm. I think it's implied okay. because the meeting is with the board and he is a member of the board. Okay. All right. I'll call the question. Then. All those in favor? Thank you, Councilor McMaster. Yes. Thank you. The motion is carried. Uh, under correspondence requiring action, uh, a letter from Loic Hersko from uh, Tofino Storage and Warehouse Housing regarding signage for industrial way businesses. And uh, as you know, I forwarded you some of the information 
um, from the past. We've had a discussion after um, uh, with Tim May, another business owner on Industrial Way, about signage. Uh, so, what are your wishes? That's right. Yeah, I uh, I don't know that we need to be making this decision. I, I wouldn't mind uh, to uh, have a sense from staff in terms of um, uh, that particular zoning and uh, you know our signage bylaws, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, what what might be a bit and what mm -hmm. might be the options? What's mm -hmm. you know there and so forth. Uh, uh, so my motion would be to refer this to staff. Second. <coughs> okay, so moved by Councillor Bart and seconded by Councillor Anderson to refer this to staff, and by virtue of that, it would then come back to the council. Yes, Councillor Anderson. Um, I'm just thinking over the long, long term. There's a lot more sites that are empty up Industrial Way, and I'm not really sure if if a directory sign is going to be able to cover up all businesses that may end up there mm -hmm. to the satisfaction of everyone because it, it otherwise it would be a very large sign. So um, I, the, the concerns expressed that in the letter that the, they're unable to read the signs because they're getting smaller and smaller. It's because there's becoming more and more businesses there and I'm not sure if, if this may mean the removal of the sign altogether. <coughs> but Because uh, I, I can't picture what sort of sign we give everybody uh, even if, if if their sign was larger and more readable then there would be many of them and it would still be confusing for a, a person driving past to be able to, to try and read all the businesses and see what's there so it's um, there may not be a, a solution that businesses would be satisfied with With it. So, oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, there are a few concerns that I have. Uh, one is that the industrial way, um, I believe the definition of heavy industrial was removed at one point, but in terms of light industrial, it, um, it factors in. But there's not really any kind of sense of planning around a neighborhood node, as it were. And um, when I was coming into town the other day, I don't know if I missed this in the past, but there was a blue highway sign that said charters pointing up Industrial Way. And I, I wondered, well, how does that fit with um, industrial or light industrial as in the making of things and so forth? So, uh, you know, when I, I think about the signage and looking at signage and what's appropriate, I'm thinking about that in a very global sense of what is that area and how is it best described? <coughs> and what uh, does having a, a, a light industrial use license, you know, allow for, in other words, how would that translate to signage? So <coughs> that's my question. Okay. Yeah, the provincial program that takes care of the signage on the highway is separate from what the District of Tafina does, and I'm sure that will come back. In a indeed, but if there's inappropriate signage in terms of that use, we need to yeah. know that as well. Councillor Thick. Um, you know, I concur with Councillor Anderson because I think that, um, you know, I think in one of the letters it referred to uh, Whistler's Function Junction. Well, as I remember, and I, I could look to the CAO for this because I'm sure he will know, in the, at Function Junction, it's just Function Junction. That's correct. It's not a list of 20 businesses who are in Function Junction. Would I be... You, I was just right there, and I can confirm that. that. <laughs> yeah, because I actually noticed that a couple weeks ago. So uh, that's why I'm saying I concur with Councillor Anderson on, you know, it is the industrial park, whatever we want to call that. That's that's where you go. Um, and what was the second thing I was going to say? That there was an issue of safety there. And we got a letter. Is that all in the same package about the... Uh, no, no, that was, that was addressed separately in a different letter. Okay. So... We're not talking about that right no. now. Okay. So I agree with the signage um, um, there, and I, I do think it'll be interesting to see what there's a there's a study undergoing under underway with Nicole Bourgeois and BIU. Correct. A sign audit. Correct. And is that still underway? Yes. Would it be possible 
to ask staff to perhaps give special attention to that. Maybe we could, um, you know, get some get some objective feedback because I'm sure they're looking at best practices in other small municipalities, and perhaps they could also give us some as part of their study. Just an idea. I'm seeing a nod from April, so I think the answer is yes. It's happening. Yeah. yeah. It's happening. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well then, then answer time. Okay. Good, Council Budget. Um, just looking at that, right at the corner there is very poor location for a, for a kind of a business directory sign. It's only visible when going north. It's completely invisible coming south. There's a phone pole, a telephone pole in the way. So it's, it's rather a poor location for even a nice looking sign. Uh, and as well, traffic is speeding past. You don't want people reading, trying to read signs. Uh, but I note that up, up industrial way, the businesses tend to be clustered in, uh, in large buildings, and that might be a better location for a, 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 a business specific sign and just have a kind of a function junction type sign down at the bottom there. Thank you. Any final discussion? Yes, um, There's um, two, uh, two signs at the base of the industrial way. One is on district property and identifies half a dozen or so businesses. And there's a second sign on private property. Does that conform to our sign bylaws? I can't tell you myself. I don't I think I don't know what the answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any final discussions on the motion? We've referred this to staff and we'll hear back. Should um, we all right. Councillor Should we respond? Uh, it will happen automatically, yes. Councillor I, I am just wondering, under what circumstances would it return to Council? We've because this is not necessarily in the purvey of Council, is it? it? In the normal administration of things, I mean, I have a whole bunch of things that keep popping up all through the district. I don't know why they happen, but they definitely don't come to Council as far as sign it or this or that and so forth. So I'm just curious what, by what sense we would have that this would actually come back to us. So the study that was mentioned is leading to a capital signage plan and that plan will come to council. Um, and um, at that point council would have, would have the opportunity to query whether or not you know, what's proposed is appropriate for in, uh, industrial way, whether we're proposing nothing or whether we're proposing <coughs> a, a giant billboard. That, that will be council's opportunity to, to, to have a second look at this. <coughs> Excellent, because specifically this won't come back to council, but it would come in the context of the larger Correct. capital plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any final discussion? Call the question then. All those in favor of the motion? Thank you. Councillor McMaster? Yes, from me. Thank you. The motion is carried. Okay. No table items, no unfinished business, and we'll move into reports. The first, an appointment of a liaison to the Wiccaninish Community School Society. Uh, first, the recommendation just from staff to simply receive the report. Can you take care of that first? I'll move that. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Seconded by Councillor Burt. Any discussion on the report? Nope. We'll do the appointments afterwards. All right, I'll call the question that all those in favor? Councillor Thurgood? I did. Oh, thank you. Sure. Councillor McMaster? Yes. Thank you. So that motion is carried. And now, consideration if Council uh, wishes to appoint a non-voting liaison. And the discussion that we have had is that uh, Councillors uh, Fick and Blanchett are both interested and available. And the proposal that I have for you is that one be appointed as the main liaison and the other an alternate. In all likelihood, they'll both be attending the community school society meetings. The community school society is aware of that and, and welcomes it. Uh, but I can't remember, I'm sorry, if it was decided between the two of you who would sit as the appointment and who would be the alternate. Councillor Bell, Bart? Yeah, I, I mean, I, the momentum is there and clearly mm -hmm. chances are this is going to go ahead. But I just want to make a comment about appointments on uh, societies and so forth. One. If they apply for funding, of course, you can't uh, uh, you actively support them under this new kind of um, legal landscape. Um, you know, so you're 
kind of silent at the council table when it comes to matters of that society when you're there as a council representative. Overall, I've not been very much a supporter of us having representatives of things that are not specifically council committees or, or bodies for the simple reason that that means that one or two councillors with varying degrees of engagement, we've had scenarios where we've learned nothing from councillors who were appointed and attended these meetings supposedly or didn't, or you know maybe a lot of engagement that all of council should be party to in the sense that <coughs> if the society has <coughs> things that are of interest to the district and so forth, that that, that becomes a delegation, it becomes an opportunity for a more round table discussion. So I am not really a big fan of this model and I, I frankly, you know, I, I'm, I don't really support it. And I was appointed as the community um, uh, school uh, society rep on the first council, and then we went through this upheaval around uh, committee appointments. We had counts, one councillor was on something like 12 or 15, you know, committees, and was spending uh, was basically a full-time job. So, uh, and nobody else really knew what was going on. So, you know, that's my my take on it. And I just wanted to blow my horn for a minute while we're thinking about this. Thank you. Councilor Dick? I agree notionally with what you're saying, Councilor Bart, but I do think in light of the implications of the society and the school district and the parks and recreation, this this particular, and, it, and I agree with you, perhaps it's for a short time until some resolutions have come to pass, but I do think that um, Councillor, uh, if I may speak for Councillor Blanchett and myself, I think that we can have a really positive impact in this situation. If I didn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be joining. And I do think there's some discrepancies between the policies of the school district and the policies of the um, uh, community school society. And I think there's been, as I learned last night, there's a lot of history there that just it's it's um, what's the right word. There's a lot of misunderstanding, I think, and I, I hope by by our being there that, that if I may speak for myself now, that, that we can help to align those policies and make it a, a, a good situation for our community, Tofino and Tolquia. And um, we also talked last night about looking not just at fixing this hole, you know, in the in the tire, so to speak, but we are looking also to longer term. So I, I do agree with you notionally. I hear what you're saying, and I can see the fault of getting too involved with too many committees, and, and this council and this community doesn't know. But I really see um, a task that I feel that our presence there would make a very positive contribution, especially in terms of this misalignment between the policies of, of one society and the, and the user groups at the District of Tofino and the user groups of, so, that's all. I just hope that we can have a really good, um, and, and if that, you know, if that resolves in a short term, perhaps our job is done. I'm not wishing to prolong that in any way, and I, I just want to say that I hear what you're saying. Thank you. Let's invite new speakers first. Thanks, Councilor Blanchard. Um, after last night's meeting, I, I tend to agree with Councilor Thick in that a lot of the problems of the the school has been having, particularly around the gym, have been miscommunication. And I think if we can have somebody there to to fill that gap, at least until the problem is solved, that uh, that it's a worthy use of, of the rest of the time. Uh, I would suggest, um, regarding Councillor Barrett's remarks, that uh, maybe the term should not be till 2018, but until until it, it is no longer useful. Or until the until the usefulness has been filled, and that way, because I I am very sensitive to the whole funding uh, fundraising, and, uh, I would like to be part of the dis able to be part of the discussion if if and when they do come uh, for a funding application. Jane, so just to point out, when we're making these appointments for the election term every year, it's reviewed annually. 
and it does note in the report that basically um, the well we're saying is for the, the term of the um, election, term of office, it can be when council no longer wishes to formally participate, or council appoints another member as its representative, or the appointed member ceases to hold office, or October 31st in the year of a general local election. So we'll look at it every year and So thank you. Um, the, the one thing I don't recall, and, and it might be something we want to consider in the policy sense, is that when we do appoint council representatives uh, at, to societies and so forth, that the minutes of that society ought to be part of our agenda package. Agreed, and I think we can make that so. Yeah. And it stands the same for other uh, external appointments too, perhaps, than the Harbor Authority, Kurz and Tofino. I, I'm just kind of also looking to staff around that because um, there may be some glitches around that and I don't know if we need to make a motion to make it, you know, conditional. Or is there uh, things that need to happen? I'm not sure if, if they, you know, minutes of, of other bodies correctly belong on a council agenda, um, but let us research that. If we can get them to council in some way, shape, or form. It may be just, you know, we have a do an email once a month with, um, all minutes attached or something from other bodies. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll look into that and get, and get back to you. Thank you. Okay. Good. So it would be appropriate now to consider a motion for appointment. <coughs> and there's some draft wording there. I still haven't heard from Councillor Stick and Blanchett if one of them would prefer to. Which roles they make? If I recall in our email discussion, I was liaison when you were alternate. Okay. okay. I Thank don't you. think it's going to make any difference. No. Strictly okay, correct. Councilor Harrison, would you like to Then yeah, I'll move uh, that Councilors Blanchett be appointed. That Councilor, Councilor Blanchett be appointed as liaison, liaison to the Wiccaninish Community School Society as a non voting. Um, liaison for the term of October 31st, 2017, and that councillor Thick be appointed as alternate. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Thurger, thank you. Discussion? Any final discussion? I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Thank you. Councillor McMaster? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, the Tofino Recreation Commission, some minutes from the meeting held December 10th for us to receive. Move to receive. Thank you, Councillor Blanchett. Seconder? Councillor Anderson? Any discussion or questions from the minutes? Um, yes, I'm just wondering if we've had applications for the Rec Commission. I, we, 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 we did some the people. appointments at the last Yeah, that's right. Meeting. Okay, yeah, I was, I was thinking that we did. It was in the notes. Sorry, mm -hmm. I answered my own question. Any other questions, Councillor Dick? Does anyone, I'm in, just interested to know if staff or anyone has the, um, I'm just interested to know a little bit more about, is this the right time, the Centennial Park? What's happening there? Is there any update coming? Or? Uh, like they mentioned this in the minutes of this um, of the Rec Commission, but I just wondered um, if this is the right place to ask or whether we might be getting an update from the staff about what, uh, the progress. So uh, we're almost done our shelter. Uh, we're just waiting for the contractor to finish that off. And he's working with volunteers and the holiday season is a bit delayed, but we should have every uh, machine on fairly soon. Uh, and then the uh, Bocce Court uh, will be finished in the spring once the rains are finished, and then we'll be finished with uh, the questions of shells. And the horseshoe pit, I think our, our staff is working with public workers to organize that to get about the pathways completed. And once all that's done, all the work is done, then we'll be um, hosting a number of uh, events uh, at the park, which is a requirement of, of the grant, and we'll be notifying the federal government before we do so as part of that. So it's in progress. Hopefully, we'll have it wrapped up at the early spring. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so there's a motion to receive the minutes. Any final discussion? I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Thank you. Councillor McMaster? Yes. <coughs> motion is carried. 
And the last item on our agenda today is a verbal update uh, from a verbal report from Aaron about uh, the January 7th earthquake. Thank you very much. So this is a fairly quick uh, update and I'm welcoming the questions once I'm done. Uh, the event, as uh, Mayor Osborne just uh, noted, was on January 7th, or January 7th, uh, last Wednesday at 6.02 p.m. It was actually three earthquakes. Um, there was a 4.8 and a 4.9 close to Tranquil Creek, and there was a third earthquake under Tofino Inlet. Uh, the, the seismic uh, instruments recorded a, about a two-second shake. I believe that if you were at the beach, it, was a bit, it could be a bit longer, depending on where you were at. I can, from my own experience, it, it was about two seconds at, at our house. Um, so the response. So following uh, our district protocol, we made sure we make sure that uh, first responders uh, uh, we make sure first responders are safe before we we move on to the, the next phase. And so I made sure that things were okay with my house, and then I left my house at six o four, which is two minutes two minutes after the earthquake, and headed on foot to the EOC. On the way, I began monitoring sources with my phone. I contacted. Uh, I was contacted by a fire captain and two EOC staff in the park. I received a text at 6.05, which is a minute later, when I was right about the, the structures, uh, that there was no tsunami warning uh, related to the earthquake. I arrived at the EOC at 6.08 and contacted uh, the CAO. Uh, once there, we went through our regular <coughs> procedure. I turned on the computers, uh, looked at the websites for uh, tsunami warnings. Um, I also have uh, access to uh, websites from NRCAN and UBC to check, uh, to confirm the size of the earthquake. Um, I then phoned uh, Emergency Management British Columbia to see if they had had any different information <coughs> than what I was receiving. They had, they had nothing. We, they were actually surprised we felt it in Tofino. They didn't realize how close it was. They were talking about it closer to Port Alice. Um, April arrived uh, with EOC members at 6.23, and at that time we made the decision, or I made the decision, not to activate the EOC um, as there was no emergency. Uh, about 6.28, uh, Jeanette Embry, our uh, emergency social services director, uh, showed up at EOC. Uh, contact, uh, the mayor contacted me at 6.30. We spoke briefly. Uh, the RCMP constable from the RCMP constable, Teresa Conklin, arrived about 6.45. And we just started disseminating the information that we had at uh, 6.52 on Facebook, 6.57 um, through an email blast, and Twitter at 7 o'clock. And I think... Um, Everybody's familiar with the contents of that, which is basically there was an earthquake or, and there was no threat of tsunami. Um, we did not activate the sirens or the call one, the one call now system because there, we determined there was no emergency. No, we didn't, we didn't uh, think it was uh, appropriate at that time. Um, following up, um, the next day we received a number of requests to be added to the emergency <coughs> notification system, which we hadn't activated. Um, there was an administrative <coughs> issue with the sign up page, and we rectified that uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, Public Works um, on Thursday, or well, beginning Thursday, inspected our reservoirs, dams, uh, and other uh, infrastructure. Uh, we also swam uh, one of the uh, uh, submarine cables. Um, one thing that came out of this for us was a number of things, but one was that uh, we need to develop maybe a uh, more robust communications or protocol for this um, for a non emergency. This sort of bleeds over from emergency to communications, and I think we'll be talking about this at our, our management meeting tomorrow. Uh, other lessons, um, it's a good reminder to be personally self-sufficient. Um, in the event of an actual emergency, a, a very large earthquake, um, the residents will be on your own for a significant amount of time. Um, so things like radio radios and grab-and-go bags are uh, recommended for everybody. Um, in an actual emergency, there's a high likelihood that communication with the district will be limited or uh, non-existent. Non uh, we were experiencing a fairly high volume of internet traffic, we think, because was, we had a difficulty even just accessing uh, the web pages that we needed to at the time. You yeah, so also have to remember, in a large in emergency, the district's going to be focused on things other than communications to begin with. So we're going to be looking at, do we have water? Do we have sewer? <coughs> how do we put out the fires? How do we clear our roads? And we're going to be dealing with that stuff before we're actually in a communications um, place, and we may not be able to communicate. So I just want to re-emphasize that people need to be personally prepared for this. We'll do the best we can, but in a real emergency, it's going to be a lot more serious than it was on Thursday. A couple reminders. If you feel the ground shake for longer than a minute, head to high ground. Don't wait for the district to tell you what to do. You start moving as soon as you feel that ground shake for longer than a minute. Um, there is no early warning systems yet for earthquakes, and so this was an earthquake rather than a tsunami. 
Apparently, UBC is developing one with NFM, <coughs> but even for us, it was a large subduction earthquake. We might get three seconds of notification, maybe, and that notification, mm -hmm. if installed and when, in, when operational, will be coming from the school via UBC. So that would hopefully mean that we have still have internet connection to UBC, and it would apparently go to SAR and off the school, and the, and the, the approach there is that it evacuate the school. It's not a, a, it's not an evacuation notification for, for the district of Tofino, so, and that's not in place yet. But that's something that NRCAN and UBC are working on. So um, I'm open to have to ask any questions if I can. Thank you very much. Questions? Um, you say you didn't activate the one call. Okay. If you do activate it, what happens? Um, so we have, I think, about 515 members, and it will dial, uh, those, each member has two pri up to two primary numbers. It will dial those numbers and, and let people know what's ha happening. It will also send an email uh, notification that you can, it can be the same or a different message at the same time. Uh, it, there is, in the one call system, a provision for texting, but it's not available in, for us for British Columbia yet. Uh, the one issue with the system or with any of these systems is that, again, the, the internet is already busy, the phone lines are already jammed, so it's a question of there's no priority to get that stuff out. It'll go out as the spot time is available. So it's worked fairly good in the past. Um, we've tested, but we never tested during an actual emergency to see, to see what would happen because yeah. we're, that's what we're using. It. So I, I can't tell you for sure what would happen. I can tell you what's happened, but we've used it to notify people of, uh, of, of practices or, or if we're running a scenario. The person I was with, as soon as it <coughs> happened, the first thing she did was get on her phone and start calling her, her relatives. So she wouldn't receive uh, a phone call. A text might be a more effective way because it comes through, if there is a communication system, it comes through nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, and that's great, but your friend is doing the right thing, taking care of um, her own uh, network and uh, herself. For, the, for us to notify, we need to get to the EOC first. Sometimes I have to get to the EOC. It means my family has to be safe, or one of our other first responders' have families have to be safe. So there's no, there's, not, there's no instantaneous messaging and stuff like that. We don't fire the sirens, and we don't run one call from our houses, because that's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to get to the EOC. If we activate, then that's the time. We're not activated at home, and unless we change that policy, that's how it's gonna be. So we're, we're not acting, um, and I'm not waking up in the middle of the night, seeing there's something happening off my phone, and that's it, it we're going to get to the EOC first, make a decision as a group, and, and get it done. That's our role. Where is the EOC? Above the fire hall. Councilor Burke. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, the, when you say um, uh, people go to higher ground, I'm just wondering how accessible information is about what constitutes higher ground in the event of the tsunami and, and a mapping. I, you know, I've, I've seen it like in Jackie Wynn's report, and I've seen it uh, down in Ukula, but I don't know that I've actually seen one in Tofino. We have a number of maps. Um, we have some maps on the tsunami brochures that we've, we've given out. Uh, there's maps available to myself. Um, part of our discussion for our management uh, will be a communication strategy, and I'm sure a map will be part of that. All the signs on the road direct you to high ground. Yeah. The ones that are on the beach direct you towards Industrial A, which is the first high ground you hit, that is your, your safe zone. Um, for an earthquake, uh, for a tsunami less than 15 meters. Um, if you're, the, the, we also have signs that were installed by the province that should head out of town towards uh, Long Beach, not sort of south of Chester. I would still suggest that you want to be going towards industrial ways. There is your quickest high, is your, is where you hit high ground soonest. There is some high ground behind Ocean Park in the corner, and there's also uh, a, a fairly high spot in, at Rosie Bay, but the biggest high spot is downtown. I think it does come up as a question to people who haven't maybe have an access to the brochure or whatever is how do I know where high ground is? So I just I follow the cars. Yeah. Don't be going the same direction. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Fick. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of um, points, and I just wanted to say, Erin, thank you. Thank you that you were here. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you um, that you gave us a detailed account of what took place right from 602 on. I really appreciate that. And I just, I'm really appreciative that you live so close to the EOC. <laughs> yeah. I think that's great. And I also want to say to Mayor Osborne, I really appreciate your comments the next day in the news. And I just thought that was really timely and, and succinct. Um, I had one comment about um, about the messaging. And I, 
I, what I would <coughs> like to see as a counselor for the District of Tofino is that, it, I, I hope I'm not going to say this in the wrong way, I would like to use these small earthquakes as opportunities to get a very strong message to our government. We're not being heard. Like last night in the school district meeting, there was no discussion about the seismic thing. That wasn't part of it, but I'm just saying that they're, they're, they're basically, there's, you guys don't complain, we're not saying anything. And I think there's an opportunity here that we can use these small earthquakes. Thank goodness they are small. And, and I think that part of our messaging, if I may um, say so, it should be, the province needs to wake up here. We have a school of 150 kids and, I don't know, 20 teachers who are at high risk there. That's a high three. If an earthquake, I don't know what uh, it, uh, of what magnitude, um, but but um, if such a thing should occur, the high three says that that school falls down. Well, if that's between uh, 8.30 and 3.30, we're in big trouble. And I just think we need to use this um, these kinds of things as a way to really get a strong message. We have a hospital here that's not earthquake proof. We have a school that is not earthquake proof. I don't know where this building stands, but there's a lot of people here at risk that I'm concerned about too. So I'm just saying, could this be part of it? It's good to say we're all well here, but could we say, and we need some seismic uh, monitoring here because we need to know how to keep our community safe. I don't want to lose 150 kids. And that's incumbent upon our council, I think, to take a more a stronger message to the province for that. Um, the other point that I that it brought home to me, and we were were very grateful that it wasn't a tsunami, but is there a way that we could test those um, tsunami warning sirens once a month, once a year, um, you know, the first Tuesday at 10 o'clock uh, of every month? I just I want to know that that if another one like that happens, those sirens work and everybody in this community can get the message. So I, I feel very strongly that um, that those that there needs to be some um, checks on that. Or, and that the community, when they hear that, they don't just panic, they know what to do, like an earthquake drill sort of thing. So I, I can't speak to the first question, but I, I can speak to the second one. And, and uh, we, we test them at once a year, and we have some discussion about testing on, on, on a monthly basis. I do test them every week uh, with a quiet test. So I have the opportunity to quiet test them, and I do that every Thursday uh, when I go up to the office to make sure that everything's uh, working. We're also working, starting to work with some of the South Island uh, municipalities who are just starting to bring in tsunami sirens. Uh, one of our projects last year that we didn't complete, that we're going to try to complete this year, was uh, redeveloping the messaging. But we're going to wait to see what comes out of South Island um, and Port Alberni. They're asking us, and we're asking them, and we want to make sure that the island wide that were consistent in, in our messaging. <coughs> and so um, when that happens, what the intent was to do was actually develop a sound that was just a blip. And so I could test it audible, but just a blip that no one's going to get concerned about. Even when we test it with the Westminster Chimes, people think there's a tsunami coming. So we're just, when, when we do the messaging to match up with South Island, we'll add a couple of test uh, sounds in as well um, that are clearly test sounds. Yeah, I, I, I'm grateful to hear you say that, but I think it's also really important that we as a community, like, we're not panicked when we hear that. If I hear that every Tuesday, or, you know, the first Tuesday of every month at 10 o'clock, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reminder to me, do I have that grab and go? It's a reminder to the kids growing up here that we're, you know, we can't just, like, rest on the laurels and then have a, have a panic when, when it, because it's going to happen, something's going to happen. So I think it's good that we hear that. It's okay that we hear that, but as you say, it needs to be publicized that, you know. And I think for me, or us, and just, and I think it's a great idea, is to understand that too, that the sirens are there generally for um, our visitors um, on the beaches, and so, um, but having locals who know what's going on and being able to explain it to people there, it, 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 it would make it a, it'd be very useful. Right, thank you. Thank you. Um, I concur strongly with what Councillor Thick is saying. I think if uh, if we heard those sirens every month, then uh, we would be a lot more cognizant of our earth that that we're in an earthquake zone and uh, and of our own preparedness or lack thereof. If 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 the the sound were like an interrupted wail rather than a continuous wail or something distinctively uh, indicating that it's a test and not a, not the real thing. I think that would go a long way toward uh, toward uh, 
toward uh, raising people's consciousness uh, on a frequent basis. As well, I've heard several comments about, you know, I was in such a place, I was downtown, can I hear the sirens from there? <coughs> if we had a full volume test, you would know where you could hear the sirens from and where you couldn't. And we have done that test before, so you can hear the sirens here on a east southeasterly wind, and you probably can't on a, on a, on a westerly, um, which is why we're also funding this, uh, the, the addition of new sirens, to sort of spread, spread that out. Uh, so. um, oh, and another. I see on the on the tofino.ca page. There's uh, under quick links. There's something called emergency emergency preparedness, which seems to deal mostly with uh, earthquakes and tsunamis. I wonder if we could. Uh, um, and when you click that link, uh, regarding Councillor Barrett's question of a map, you have to dig a bit to get to the map. I wonder if we could make. Uh, the map and rather than emergency preparedness make it a little more explicit saying earthquake tsunami uh, preparedness um, so that people can get to a map and to the suggestions uh, without having to think too much about it. Councilor Thurgood. Um, you mentioned about the school having a siren system? Uh, uh, Possibly installed at some point. Oh, not, not, yet. Not, not currently installed. Any other questions? Hang on, just anyone else? So the hope, one, one hope is that line's love. The second one is we've been working with uh, Tofino Tech to develop a satellite internet there that, that we haven't put in yet, but that's maybe it's put on tires. And so that after the event, if our building is still standing, we can we can try to tweak that. We have satellite phones and we have radios um, um, as, as well. We have two satellite phones. Will um, the radios reach as far as Nanaimo and Victoria? Not, there's no setup for that at this point. That would be, that's, we need to develop some pretty serious regional infrastructure um, to do that. I, I think for me again, you know, on your line of questioning, is we need to, we need to be prepared to take care of ourselves for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and w you know, one thing, one one aspect we've kind of worked with and hasn't we haven't got there yet is working with the local radio provider, ninety point one, to uh, develop a a, a sub base sub-broadcast base so that we could, if we needed to, take over that frequency and at least get a radio message out. Again, that's if radio towers are still up, if we have power, you know, all, all that. But we haven't been able to come to an agreement yet. Euclid actually does have that. They actually have a, a transmitter at their EOC that they can take onto the, onto the uh, that they can transmit over the, that frequency. Um, we're not there yet, but we, we have had initial discussions over the last two years with yeah, the owner of that radio station. Thank you. Councillor Thick? Um, and just a question. Do, is this discussion enough, or I'm just wondering what other councillors feel. Do we need a motion to, to express our vulnerability of community safety that I've, I've spoken to today in terms of our, our school, our hospital, and our municipal hall, or, or is what we've discussed enough? I'm, I'm just wondering if we don't have many opportunities to speak to this, and I, I, my question is, do we need a motion to, to more, uh, to use opportunities, not uh, such as earthquakes or any opportunity to, to speak about our vulnerability a, a, as a community and our safety in particular? 
I think this is an effective demonstration of how good communication is essential because rumors have a way of getting away from us. Um, so <coughs> Councillor Blanchett asked, told me that he had been informed there was a, a crack in the hospital foundation. So I got in touch with the hospital manager and uh, they did a building inspection immediately following the quake. Um, they thought there were some new cracks in the slab, but it turns out there were not. They were cracks that were previously existing. They have an engineering report where they were able to compare the uh, slab and foundation with photographs from before. So there are, they had the uh, Island Health Manager of Facilities and Maintenance Operations in, and it was confirmed there's, there are no immediate concerns for the building. Um, uh, as a precautionary measure, they've instituted a precision measurement monitoring schedule to be able to assess whether changes occur. So a speedy, a speedy reply and able to say no, that's not the case. Uh, any other comments on Councillor Six asking us to consider a motion or if we want to spend some time thinking about this? Again, remember please, as we're going to in a moment, the notice of motion option is always available. It's a little hard sometimes to think about the best way forward kind of on the fly, and you might want to think about this a little bit. I do know that the District of Ukulit, um, uh, you know, they're fairly active in uh, their political conversations with, with uh, MLAs and ministers around things like earthquake safety, and I would suggest that it might be worth some consideration of uh, more joint efforts there too, because we share a lot of concerns that should go forward, in my opinion, to the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. And we are here to lobby for our community's interests, and to me, this is fair game for that. I have to agree with you. That mm -hmm. if, if there is something to say, then it should be thought out and where to, where to go. And, um, just crafting a motion based on a report, I don't think it would, or, or may not hit the mark mm -hmm. as well as something that's more considered and researched a little bit. Okay. Anyone else? I rather Councilor favor Councillor Bartz because uh, this is part of a bigger plan. So mm -hmm. to push it, to make it, make it a, a conscious item in our strategic planning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any final questions for Eric? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, so one item, sorry I forgot because we had amended the agenda, of course, under new business, a notice of motion, and Councillor Thick. Yeah, I just um, would like to give further thought and discussion um, towards the elected official laptop policy, so I would like to give a notice that I would bring forward a motion at the January 27th meeting regarding a review of the elected sorry. official laptop policy. I'll work with staff to draft the appropriate motion and it will be circulated in advance of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, so this brings us to the 15 minute question period. Oh, we have two members of the audience, so I don't think it'll be 15 minutes. Um, any questions? Andrew, do you have any questions for us? Yes. Yeah, just because it'll save me some time. Uh, sure. uh, Councillor Blanchett, uh, you, you spoke really well, but I just needed a, a bit of clarification. When we were talking about signage, uh, there, there were suggestions about uh, that sign not being very well located, and that maybe one thing to do, what I think I heard you say, was that maybe one thing to do would have sort of a general sign there, and then other signs sort of up, up the street, 
talking about the different clusters of businesses? Yes. Did I get that right? Yes. Right. You got it right. Thank you so much. Anything else? That's all I have. Okay. Thanks, guys. Any other questions? Yes. Um, for me as well, regarding uh, the signage, um, I would like to know when we will hear back from staff regarding downtown directional signage pointing towards Main Street from Campbell Street. These signs were discussed last year and referred to staff, and we still have to hear back from, uh, from that. But when will we hear uh, about that? Because the 2015 season is coming up here, and Thank you. It, it's been months and months ago that that's been referred back to staff. Uh, when will we get a report on this, and when will we take some action? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, Your Worship, I don't know that offhand. I'm happy to let Council know, and I'll also uh, let Minnow know directly um, when, we, when we expect that, if that's acceptable. Okay. I, don't, I just can't give an answer right now. Okay, thank you. So is, is there a chance that this will be for the 2015 season? Or <coughs> I certainly does, hope so. Yeah, because a request like this, like it shouldn't take six months, should it? But thank you. Fair question. Andrew, did you have a point? You no, know? I just follow up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, all right, can I have the motion to go in camera and read by somebody, please? Councilor Zip. That the meeting be closed to the public pursuant to sections 90, 1A, C, and E of the community charter to discuss matters relating <coughs> to the personal information of an individual being considered for a community appointment, employee relations, and the acquisition, disposition, or expropriation of land or improvements. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Anderson? All those in favor? Thank you. Councillor McMaster? Yes. Thank you. The motion is carried. All right. 